Hey, in this video I would like to talk with you guys about engine remapping. Why you should remap your engine, why you shouldn't remap your engine. And I will also talk to you about the litric power of an engine or how many horsepower should you have per liter. By remapping or chip tuning the ECU from a car engine, it means that we are rewriting the software. If you chip tune a naturally aspirated engine, you won't get too much out of it. You'll get around from 5 to 20 horsepower and from 10 to 30 newton meters of torque. You get a lot of power and a lot of torque if you have a turbocharged or supercharged engine. That's where remapping is worth investing in. Now, before we get in depth into engine remapping, keep in mind that you should modify your engine or remap it only if the engine is in perfect condition. No flaws, no faults, no problems with the tubal charger, no problems with the injectors. Now, where we were in university, professors told us that a litric power or a power to liter, anywhere from 50 to 100 horsepower is more than enough. Nowadays, manufacturers have exceeded from 150 to 200 horsepower per liter, which is insane. Cars like the Mercedes A45 AMG, which has only a 2 liter turbocharged engine with now with over 400 horsepower, isn't that reliable as you would expect. You get a ton of power, but reliability would be a big issue for that car. So, older generation engines used to have from 40 to 80 horsepower per liter, which were extremely reliable. Current engines have anywhere from 80 to 150 horsepower per liter, which is just fine. And remapped and tuned engines, whether they buy, they're made by a manufacturer or by yourself by chip tuning the engine, are anywhere from 150 to 200 horsepower per liter, which will result eventually in low reliability. And that's a small summary for power to displacement. The more power you get per liter out of an engine, the less reliable it will be. My personal car has a 1.6 naturally aspirated engine with a compression ratio of 10.2 and it has just 102 horsepower, which is equivalent to exactly 63 horsepower per liter, which is just fine. It's, a, it's an extremely reliable engine. Be careful if you want to add a turbocharger to a naturally aspirated engine and then to remap it. You have 90% chances that that engine will fail unless you change the important internals of that engine. Pistons, injectors, engine block if necessary, and the list goes on. I've seen this on a 3.2 VR6 engine on the Golf 5, which had stock 250 horsepower, and by adding a turbocharger and remapping it, resulting in having over 500 horsepower, which was more than that engine could handle by itself without changing any internals. So this is very important. If you want to add a ton of horsepower to your engine, you can by reducing its reliability, but it's possible only if you change internals. Now, what does remapping actually do to our ECU? Well, by remapping the software, we actually modify the injection pressure, the injection quantity, the pressure in the turbocharger or supercharger, the timing of the valves, and intake and intercooling are upgraded. Intake and intercooling are generally related. We do our best to cool down the air from the intake to have a better air fuel ratio and to have better results. Now, by remapping the engine, we will increase power and torque at the same time. And by increasing power and torque, we will increase the brake mean effective pressure within the engine, which will result in wear increase, which will result in a lower reliability, which eventually, in some cases, can lead to engine failure. Now, what kind of remapping can we do to our engines? The most friendly kind of remapping that we can do to our engines is stage one, which is just a software upgrade. We don't need to change anything inside the engine. No internals, no physical components need to be replaced. In stage two, we upgrade the software to the maximum point and we should also change the intake. In stage three, four and five, uh, some manufacturers have stage 2+, plus, stage 3+, plus, etc. In 
stage 3, 4 and 5 we will have racing software which will require racing components and we, we should change the internals. The internals mean forged pistons, valves, crankshaft in some cases, turbo charger. If you already have a turbo, if you want more power, you should agree to a bigger turbo charger for a bigger pressure. Also injectors need to be replaced and cooling will become an issue. So in order to have a ton of power, you would need to cool down the engine. The stock cooling for an engine with let's say 150 horsepower is limited. If you increase power, heat will increase at the same time, so we need to cool down the engine. Let's take as an example the 2 liter turbo charged diesel engine generally found in Volkswagen Group used on the Audi, Skoda, Seat and Volkswagen. Uh, Volkswagen has constantly changed and added lots of uh, software versions for this engine. Uh, the lowest point for the 2 liter turbocharged diesel engine is 110 horsepower, which can be found on the Golf 6. It has a low tuning, a low fuel consumption, and reliability is highly increased. You, you have the most reliable version of this engine. The second version, with, which in my opinion was the most commonly used in the in Volkswagen group, was the 2 liter 140 horsepower. You have a great balance between reliability, fuel consumption, and performance. The next um, step will be right from the factory the 2 liter turbocharged engine with 170 horsepower. If you have purchased the 140 horsepower edition, you could use a stage 1 to increase from 140 to 170. Also, in the 110 horsepower edition, you can upgrade to stage 1 from 110 to 140. I'm not saying that there isn't any hardware, any internal difference between the 110 and the 240 horsepower, but between these two or these two or these two, there are small differences and you can chip tune the engine by adding a stage 1 remap. If we would remap, the factory 170 horsepower version of the engine, we would obtain 205 horsepower. Uh, this version is offered generally by famous uh, brands such as Rebel Technique or APR. I'm not sponsored by them, but I generally know about them. <laughs> and the most powerful version of this engine is the 240 horsepower, but the engine has two turbochargers. I don't know if you should remap this version you would probably get around 270 horsepower out of 2 liters which is too much. I don't think if that engine could withstand even 100,000 kilometers. If you want the best, remember these figures. This engine will have around 135 horsepower per liter, which should be in our limit. But diesel engines are not that great for chip tuning. If you want the perfect balance between power, fuel consumption and reliability, you should be right in the middle. You're in the safe zone, I would say. Even if at the limit a 2 liter turbocharged diesel engine could have 270 horsepower on the factory remapped version, it's too much for a diesel engine. Diesel engines can't handle that much power per liter. In a gasoline engine, there are literally cars out there which have a 1.6 engine turbocharged which have 270 horsepower. You can find this engine in the Peugeot RCZ or recently the Peugeot 308. 270 horsepower divided by 1.6 is equivalent to 168 horsepower per liter, which stands in this limit. Now, if I had to give you an example of a car with more than 200 horsepower per liter, I wouldn't know what car to exemplify. The Bugatti Chiron has an 8 liter quad turbocharged gasoline engine with 16 cylinders and it has 1,500 uh, 1, horsepower. And that is also 
below 200 horsepower per liter. It gives us exactly 187 horsepower per liter, which is quite a lot. But the Chiron isn't designed to be fuel efficient or super reliable. It's just meant to go fast. It's meant to break a world record, to be the fastest car, to be the fastest production car in the world. Now let's talk a bit about the price for remapping. If you want a stage one or stage two, it's anywhere from 300 to 500 euros per stage. It depends on the car, on the software of the car, the version of the ECU. In some cases, there you have the same car and there are two or three versions of the ECU. Each ECU is unique and you have to add the proper modifications to it in order for the car to run properly. Another question is, would I ever remap my engine for my future cars? Well, if I would buy a car which would be in the safe zone of around 80 to 150 horsepower per liter, I would probably add a stage one. Probably. I don't know exactly. I wouldn't go beyond stage one. Stage one is meant to be a safe upgrade. And you could add this remap, this modification to your car if only if it's in perfect condition. Perfect condition means generally if your car is newish or a premium pre-owned used car with less than 100,000 kilometers is relatively new let's say it has 3-4 years old and you want to add some extra juice some extra fun to it then yeah you should add the stage one if you're all about modifying having the ultimate car out of the tiny 2 liter supercharged gasoline engine go ahead and add the stage 5 I've seen a Golf GTI with a 2 liter uh, turbocharged gasoline engine which had 200 horsepower as the standard and the owner changed internals, changed the software and it went to 600 horsepower so I've seen even more extreme cases on a Golf I've seen an even more extreme case on a Golf 2 it had a 2 liter turbocharged gasoline engine all-wheel drive and it had over 1000 horsepower. I don't even know how that engine could resist, literally. It's on YouTube, you can find it in the link below. So these are my thoughts about engine tuning, chip tuning, remapping, whatever you want to call it. Let me know in the comment section below if you would ever chip tune your car, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, why you would, why you wouldn't. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.